N2O4 is a gas molecule, and it is known to just spontaneously decompose into two molecules of nitrogen dioxide, NO2. This particular process, like many chemical reactions, does not proceed 100%, meaning that we never get to a point where 100% of the N2O4 molecules have been converted into NO2 molecules. We never reach a point where there is no more N2O4 and all we have left is NO2. Like many reactions, when this system reaches a point, when we reach a certain amount of NO2, the reaction actually starts happening in the reverse direction, meaning that the NO2 molecules recombine and begin reforming the N2O4. When this process happens, we refer to this as the backwards reaction or the back or the reverse reaction. When this process starts happening, it also doesn't go to completion, meaning that we don't take all of these and just turn them all back into N2O4. Instead, we reach a point of balance where some of the N2O4 molecules are decomposing to form NO2 and some of the NO2 molecules are combining to form N2O4 and at any given time, we have a little bit of everything present. When a reaction behaves in this particular manner, when the forward and backward reaction are both occurring, we say that that particular reaction or system is in equilibrium. Equilibrium is defined as when the rate of the forward and backward reactions Uh, the rate is equal and they are constant. Equal meaning that this reaction is happening at the same rate as this reaction right here. And because they are equal, this means that it appears as the concentrations of all of the molecules in this system are staying constant and unchanging. So the concentrations of all the reactants and products are a constant. For any system that can exist in equilibrium, in this state of equilibrium, we have a special way of writing or expressing the chemical reaction. So that is to just, you know, by our own personal choice, choose something to be the reactant. In this case, we'll just choose N2O4 to be the reactant. That just simply means that we'll write it on the left-hand side. And then we use these different, this different type of arrow notation. And then we write whatever we've chosen to be our products. Now there isn't really any rule that says which of these has to be on the left side of the arrow or the right side of the arrow. We could just as well have reversed these. This, this type of arrow notation, which we refer to as equilibrium arrows, is used to indicate that this reaction proceeds easily in both the forward direction and the backward direction. It is important, I want to remind you, that we are not using resonance arrows, which is a double-headed arrow. That's not the type of notation that we use to indicate equilibrium. These are two separate arrows, each with a half of an arrowhead. Now, one of the really interesting things about systems in equilibrium is that it kind of doesn't matter where the system starts. It's always going to get itself to this point of where the rate and the, of the forward and the backward reactions are equal and the concentration is unchanging. So down here, we're going to imagine a few different scenarios for this particular system right here and take a look at uh, how that might work graphically. So let's say that um, in this first graph right here, we're going to uh, graph a situation where our initial condition is that we have only the N2O4 molecule present and we have no NO2 molecule present at all. And what we're going to do is graph how the concentration of N2O4 and NO2 will change over time. So this is used to represent the molarity um, versus time. So if we're starting with only N2O4, maybe the initial amount of N2O4 might be somewhere up high like this. I'm gonna label this. And the NO2, because we're not starting with NO2, NO2 is gonna be down here on the bottom. 
Now, if we're starting with only N2O4, we know that some of that N2O4 is going to decrease as it produces NO2, but it's not going to go all the way down to zero. That's something that we also know. Like it's going to decrease, but it's not going to drop itself down to zero. So maybe it reaches this point right here, and it reaches a point where, as we said, the concentration is a constant. So at some time, the concentration just kind of levels off. Now, the N2, NO2 molecule, we know again, because we've started with none, and because we know that some of the NO2 molecule will be performing this back reaction, we know that we're going to get an increase in the amount of NO2, but it also is going to level itself off. So maybe it just looks something like this. And here's our NO2 concentration, and here is our N2O4 concentration. So here's the scenario. And once, once we get to write about this point where the concentrations are constant, this is where we say the system is in equilibrium. It's reached that point where the concentrations are constant. What if we had the opposite situation happening? So what if our initial condition was that we only had NO2 and we did not have any N2O4? What would that look like? Well, if we had no N2O4, that means our N2O4, which I'm drawing in pink, would start down on the bottom. And we only had NO2, let's say maybe we start with like this much NO2 here. If we have only NO2, we know that some of that NO2 is going to decrease as it produces N2O4. And it's gonna decrease to say something that kind of looks like this. And the N N2O4, we know that we're going to be forming some of the N2O4, so we're going to get an increase in that as well, and maybe it goes up to like right around here, like that. Now what I'm attempting to show here, and I didn't do a great job with the NO2 line, is that these concentrations are moving themselves to roughly the same place. They should be moving themselves to exactly the same place as what we saw in this first scenario. Um, so our NO2 concentration is gonna drop quite a bit and our N2O4 concentration is gonna go up quite a bit to get to that point where the concentrations are constant. This would be the time where we say the system has reached equilibrium and maintains equilibrium. The concentration of the reactants and products being a constant is not referring to just this one particular scenario, but it's a constant that is unique to this particular reaction, that we're always going to see this type of relationship between N2O4 and NO2, no matter what we start with. So let's imagine another scenario. Let's say in this initial scenario, we start with equal amounts of both. So they're both gonna start like maybe right around here in the middle-ish area. And in this situation, how would they change over time? Well, we know that N2O4 wants to get itself up to a concentration that is right around here. And the NO2 wants to get itself to a concentration that's right around here. And this is what it would look like as it reaches equilibrium and stabilizes.